Welcome to the QTV News Desk. We take a look at the headlines. Zambia Revenue Authority Commissioner General Kingsley Chanda says that the authority is positive that it will exceed its revenue collection target for this year. Government has allocated about 87 million kwacha to set up an infrastructure fund. With the news in detail, my name is Chitalu Chinsenge. Zambia Revenue Authority ZRA Commissioner General Kingsley Chanda says the authority is positive that it will exceed its revenue collection target for this year. Mr. Chanda has told QTV Business News that the authority is targeting a surplus in terms of revenue collection. He says there could be some challenges on the tax revenues, but that this does not distract the authority from collecting what is required. And Mr. Chanda says it is gratifying that most of the proposals by ZRA were accepted to be included in the 2018 national budget and hopes that Parliament approves these proposals. Very excited that uh, most of our budget proposals were accepted by government. And we are hoping and praying that uh, Parliament will actually uh, approve those measures because they are in the interest of, uh, of the nation. As you heard from the minister, almost 70% of the budget must be financed through domestic uh, resource mobilization. And ZRA is very keen that, so we are very confident that this budget will be delivered and the ZRA is equal to the task. We will meet the 2017 budget. Uh, we, we in fact uh, um, collect more. Uh, we are projecting a surplus in terms of tax revenues. Um, there could be some other challenges on the non-tax revenues, but I think for, for ZRA we are very confident that we will meet our targets. Home Affairs Minister Stephen Kampiongo says government is determined to bring sanity in Chibolia compound with regards to drug abuse. Mr. Kampiongo says that last week's raid in Chibolia is one of the operations that the Ministry of Home Affairs will be conducting to ensure that there is law and order in Chibolia. Mr. Kampiongo says the ministry will ensure that it brings to book all drug traffickers and abusers in the area by conducting such operations. Offenders offend every other time, okay? And so uh, probably what you should have been saying is that it was a way forward. Yeah, you know, we did a cleanup some time back and uh, we could have sustained our presence in the area in order to avoid what has happened now. But to allow the situation to culminate into uh, where it got. You must have seen the seizures that we, we got. The, 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 the volumes and quantities are so alarming, you know, and so uh, it's something that we shall continue to do. And we know there are some other areas that have uh, also, you know, uh, gotten contaminated from the Chiwari hub. But we are determined this time around, and I can assure you that um, uh, now it's to make that place uh, a conducive place for the innocent living, uh, citizens living there. Offender. Government has allocated about 87 million kwacha to set up an, Im an infrastructure fund. Ministry of Finance Permanent Secretary Mukuli Chikuba says that the infrastructure fund will be used to finance projects with financing from the infrastructure bonds, development banks and private, ba and private funds such as shares. Mr. Chikuba was speaking at the Zambia mission in Pretoria, South Africa, when he paid a courtesy call on Zambia's high commissioner to that country, Emmanuel Mwamba. He says that the introduction of the fund in Zambia is important, adding that financing projects such as roads and rails will be easily done without any challenges. He adds that during their meetings with the Development Bank of South Africa, DBSA, and the Industrial Development Bank Corporation, IDC, and landmark it was agreed that the south african government and zambia will co will co invest in the fund and advised how the infrastructure fund could be operated the signing of the memorandum of understanding mou regarding the operationalization of the corporation is expected to be signed during the state visit of president jacob zuma in october 2017 and Zambia's High Commissioner to South Africa, Emmanuel Mwamba, says infrastructure development is a key in every developing country as such a move was welcome. He says the African Union and SADC agenda of industrialization will only be realized when infrastructure such as roads, rail, 
ports and airports are built. Mr. Mwamba says about 17% of Zambia's foreign direct investment comes from South Africa, adding that the bilateral relations between the two countries cannot be ignored. This is contained in a statement issued to QFM News by Zambia's High Commission to South Africa, First Secretary Press and Public Relations, Naomi Nyawali. Information and Broadcasting Services Minister Kampamba Mlinga says the introduction of landing rights charge at the rate of 3,150 kwacha per television channel, which has less than 35% local content except for educational and scientific channels, is a plus for the country. Ms. Mlinga says this will encourage local producers to produce more locally made content. She explains that one of the things that come with digital migration is a promotion of local content, saying this will go well with digital migration. Ms. Mlenga, who is also Chief Government Spokesperson, says this is a plus for local artists to produce more. The uh, milestone that has actually happened in our ministry, which uh, my colleagues you have not asked about, is also the landing rights for foreign content. You are aware that uh, three months ago, uh, Cabinet approved the, the, the national film policy, which is actually the framework. So us putting up, um, hiking the price for the landing rights for foreign content will only just promote uh, our local artists to produce the local co uh, content. And one of, the, poli one of the, the things that come in with the digital migration policy is local content. And, and us as government, through his able leadership, His Excellency Mr. Edgar Chango Aluhu, wants to promote our local artists. So this is a plus for our local artists. This is coming up with a, a, a erection of provincial studios across the country. These are state-of-the-art provincial studios. This is a job creation that our government has actually been talking about. So by uh, upping up the price for foreign content, except education, it will mean we'll give an opportunity for the local artists to begin to produce local content. Like they said, the Health Minister Dr. Chitalu Chirufia says the increase in the budgetary allocation to the health sector which has increased to about 9.5% of the total budget, will result in the quality provision of health care. Dr. Chilufia says that through the 2018 national budget, the government will see the introduction of the innovation, innovative health care financing, which will also result in the introduction of social health insurance. He says that this will no doubt be a game changer. Dr. Chilufia says the allocation to drugs has also been increased by 56%, saying this is a plus for Zambia's health sector. The health minister says in order to also increase the manpower in the sector, the government will next year recruit 1,000 health personnel to help in quality health service delivery. Secondly, the allocation to drugs has been doubled. In fact, it has been increased by 56%, and that is a plus. It also means that our people will have increased access to safe and efficacious drugs. Critically, we've been given a thousand more health workers with the 7,400 that we recruited this year, a thousand more will certainly take us to another level. It's also important to note that uh, the Minister of Finance has introduced tax on tobacco and on alcohol, and this is important because one, it's a statement of intent for this government that we do not want our people to get the negative effects of tobacco and alcohol. And whatever extra monies come out of tobacco and alcohol in terms of tax will go towards financing health care. And it's also important to note that it also acts as a deterrent to those that may not afford it. So it is a healthy Budget. The ruling Patriotic Front, PF, has distanced itself from police action that led to the arresting of six people who wanted to protest against the procurement of the 42 fire trucks. Speaking during the PF Media Interactive Forum in Lusaka, PF Media Director Sandy Chanda says that the party never instructed the police to arrest the protesting citizens. Mr. Chanda says the police had advised against such a protest, saying the citizens went against the advice of the police. He explains that even the PF youths wanted to do a solidarity budget much, but that they were 
advised by the police not to proceed with their planned march, saying this is what the protesters were supposed to do. Meanwhile, the PF media director says a malicious campaign by former Information and Broadcasting Services Minister Chimba Kamwili against President Edgar Lungu and the PF will not work because he is slowly losing political direction. The first thing to note is that uh, the Patriotic Front had nothing to do with uh, the action uh, which the police took. Um, we want to believe that uh, the police in their correct judgments felt and believed that um, uh, that was the uh, right thing for them to do, so it had nothing to do with the Patriotic Front. Um, as members of the media uh, would be aware, the Patriotic Front uh, youths did announce that uh, they were going to march in solidarity of uh, the 2018 national budget. Um, but of course, after the police, through the spokesperson of the Zambia police, announced that um, no solidarity marches and no protests will be allowed at parliament, we advised um, uh, the youths in the patriotic front that uh, that solidarity march shouldn't go ahead and it didn't go ahead. And so there's been a notion uh, by some, especially those who are aligned to the opposition, who the first thing... The Anti-Corruption Commission, ACC, has been accused of being a toothless institution when it comes to fighting corruption. UPND Chair Chairman for Rural Reconstruction and Development, Mono Mapani, says it is worrying that the ACC and the Drug Enforcement Commission, DEC, are not working to the expectations of the people of Zambia. Mr. Mapani says these institutions must prove their independence from other powers. He says the recent procurement of the, tra of the fire trucks is one example where the ACC has failed the people of Zambia just because the people involved are in government. Mr. Mapani says that these two institutions should be proactive if the nation is going to end corruption, more especially when dealing with government officials. I want to take this opportunity to talk to the East, to talk to DEC and the Anti-Corruption Commission through the people of Zambia. That there's a lot that has been talked about what's happening in this country. Honorable Kamwili has shown direction. And now it's up to the people of Zambia to demand for the correct thing to be done. The, the Anti-Corruption and the DEC, they have heard the position that has put, been put across by the Honorable Minister. Now, if indeed these two institutions claim that they are still independent and they realize that they are an act of parliament with well-spelled functions, we expect them to move in and do the correct thing. And to take the tourism Minister Charles Banda says the tourism levy is going to develop the country's tourism sector in product development and marketing. Mr. Bande has told QTV News that the ministry has come up with various mechanisms to supplement the national budget. He says that if it is established that there will be a deficit in financing the tourism sector in 2018, the levy will be used to patch up the deficit. Mr. Bande has charged that funds allocated towards the sector in 2018 will just be used to sustain pressing issues that the ministry is facing. To be very frank with you, we are going to use it to help us in tourism development, product development, and partially marketing. Where we feel that the budget, the national budget, is not uh, actually helping us completely. We should be able to, to support the deficit through the, the, the levy that we are going to, to end uh, in the to, to tourism development fund. So there are other projects which are very, very, very immediate. There are problems which we need to tackle almost like yesterday. That is where the money will go. But principally what we want to do is to help out on product development, marketing, and tourism development. Economic Equity Party, EEP President Chirufia Tayali has described the 2018 national budget as a punishment to the poor. Mr. Tayali says that this is because government has increased tax on a lot of items in the 2018 national budget. He says, inasmuch as the taxing may appear to be microscopic, 
they are going to have a huge negative impact on the cost of doing business next year. He says the two, the two kwacha, which uh, has been placed on cement, may appear to be small but will have an impact on people who depend on low income to construct permanent structures. He says a lot of stakeholders have bemoaned the increase in poverty levels in the country, but nothing has been done by government to cushion the impact. Meanwhile, Mr. Tayali has described the failed protests by some political players at Parliament before the budget presentation as ill-timed. Mr. Tayali says it is unfortunate that some political players will use any opportunity to gain political mileage, even if it lands them in problems. I am an advocate. I am an advocate, but you know, I think also when we are, when we are advocating for something, and when we, especially when we decide to protest, we must have an objective. What is our objective? And if there is an objective, there must be a result. From my point of view, I'm still not clear on why they demonstrated. Why were they demonstrated? What did they hope to achieve out of their demonstration? What did they hope to achieve? I'm still not clear about their object, the, their object of protesting. Otherwise, it looks like you know some of these people, you know, they want to, you know, to to get, uh, you know, to get to get into the limelight, into the public uh, domain. But really, I I don't know what are they going to achieve. The 42 million those those fire tenders are already here, and from our point of view, we have been following that issue of the fire tender. Those fire tenders they cost just about one million. The issue that you can be talking about is that why did they buy so many? But okay, if they bought so many, if you demonstrate, then what? Are they going to take back those some of those trucks? Because Zawin allowed to start demonstrating, are they going to take back? What are they going to achieve? And if they are talking about prudence, that they want to prevent government from, uh, you know, for, uh, to be responsible in their in their um, in their expenditure. I mean, why not engage them? Why should they go and demonstrate? You demonstrate to say no, not quite evidence, but these people whom we have evidence against, you are not arresting them. They are in parliament. So we are demonstrating so that they get arrested. But they don't have evidence. I mean, what are they doing? I mean, from my point of view, I'm sorry. I don't support that kind of uh, protest. I don't support other things I would support, but that one, ah, no. People's Alliance for Change, PAC, has maintained that President Edgar Lungu should consider constituting a technical committee to investigate the procurement of the 42 fire trucks despite the Anti-Corruption Commission clearing that there was no corruption involved in the tender process. Anti-Corruption Commission ACC Acting Spokesperson Dorothy Mwanza revealed that the Commission already investigated the matter relating to the awarding of the tender involving the 42 fire tenders in 2016. But Mr. Banda maintains that in order to promote transparency, there is need to do a forensic audit of the procurement process. He says in order for the people to have full confidence in the procurement processes, it is important that this matter is investigated thoroughly without uh, favoring anyone. Kantanshi Independent Member of Parliament Anthony Mumba has aged citizens to embrace the use of solar energy. Mr. Mumba says that there is need to make sure that investment that goes into the energy sector has a reflection of climate change management. He tells QTV that this is because so many investors from various countries have pumped in so much money into climate change activities in the country, which should come into fruition. Mr. Mumba has since aged the citizenry to take climate change matters seriously for the benefit of the country, especially in the energy sector. We have to ensure that we embrace solar. So we need to make sure that investment that goes into the energy sector has to have a reflection of the climate change. That's why so much money is being put together by various countries to support climate change. And that's the reason why things like uh, geysers and so on are being increased. It's because of the fact that uh, you know, we need to take uh, you know, climate change issues seriously. Thank you. That is all we had for you in the news. Before we go, we take a look at the headlines. Zambia Revenue Authority Commissioner General Kingsley Chanda says the authority is positive that it will exceed its revenue collection target for this year. 
government has allocated about 87 million kwacha to set up an infrastructure fund. For more news, you can visit www.qtvzambia.com. My name is Chitalu Chinsenge. God bless and pleasant viewing.